I've been doing some local history videos recently and I decided that uh, there was enough forgotten stuff around town that I'd take a quick drive around and point out some of the places where things have disappeared, things have changed. I'm going to try to throw in a few photos, maybe a little video, and give people like a little history tour going back through the decades. I'm going to start this in Berkeley and Hillside. I'm standing in Berkeley looking across Butterfield Road at Hillside, looking up Darmstadt Road. In the old days, in my memory, this was the location of the Midwest Distribution Center for the old Green Stamp Company. Uh, the old office tower is gone, but behind these buildings is the warehouse. And where that pylon sign is, that used to be where the big old Green Stamp sign used to hang. There used to be more houses down around here. But the tollway keeps expanding, it keeps getting wider and wider. And you'll notice these big giant berms. Well, in a little while, I'll tell you where the dirt came from to build the berms so they could elevate the toll. parcel is now occupied by the DuPage Water Commission. This is the waterworks for the entire DuPage County. Uh, they chose this parcel because it's some of the highest ground in the area. But in the old days that I remember, there used to be a house, maybe another house that had kind of like a commercial building stuck to the front of it, and a bunch of raggedy weeds fields behind it that was a great place to take your mini bike or your bicycle. People around here would call that type of place the trails. This is the county line. I'm standing in Cook County looking directly across the street at DuPage. And here at High and Butterfield used to be what was called the Millionaire's House. And in the old days there was kind of a, a white plank fence. Oh, kind of similar to that one down the street there. But it surrounded this property and there was a big old house which we called the mansion. He had a barn, he had a tennis court, there was an old stone well with a roof back there. And at the time I remember the place it was the Gaddy family had lived here. And I had understand that the Gaddy family in the 50s had owned the land all the way up towards Butterfield Park and down towards Adams or even Madison. It was a very melancholy feeling to watch the old place come down. They're gonna, they've sold this property here and this stretch along the sidewalk they're gonna develop into about four houses. This is an old house here. It's looking north down High Street. Another view. It's an old barn there.
This is the turn at Adams and Stewart. I'm looking north and I remember when all these houses went in and there's a couple stories about this area. Um, swinging this way to the east, the so-called Park Manor subdivision was laid out in the very late 50s and built up during the 1960s, but when it was originally built the only access it had to get in and out of the subdivision was up through Butterfield Road. Uh, Stewart was the very first street that got put through when this McDougall section got built. And so for a very short period of time you'd be able to drive in the town around this corner and connect in the cedar. And right about where the pavement changes colors there there used to be a barricade going back, oh, mid-60s, late 1960s, and the open area back in here was just called the Prairie. This is the low end of Butterfield Park. That's Butterfield Road up at the top of the hill. And there's an interesting story about the hills, the ball fields, and the contours of the land here. Uh, right down there, where the sidewalk hits that little bit of a ridge, that used to be the high spot of the area. The hill here used to be much bigger. What happened was, in the mid-late 50s, when the Tri-State Tollway was being built, the tollway contracted with the Elmhurst Park District and the tollway bought all the top dirt through here and they came in and scraped away quite a bit of this dirt. It was trucked over to the tollway and those berms were constructed. These two ball fields are pretty much the way they've always been. The bleachers have changed up. They're not uh, the old plank bleachers anymore. They're now some sort of steel metal. Uh, the backstops have been changed up a little. But over here, this ball field, this ball field uh, is controlled by Elmhurst College, who's contracted with the Park District, and they're using the East Berlin approach to baseball. And they have the uh, fence there. In the old days kids used to be able to come over here and you could play a pickup game in the big ball field and sometimes the lights got left on late at night and you could play under the lights. It was kind of exhilarating back in those days. No more. Uh, sometimes you might be able to get special permission to use this field. Odds are you won't be able to. In the it. 1960s the city of Elmhurst used to have their fireworks down in this park and just about where the camera is pointed that area of the park would be roped off and the fireworks guys would set up down there and then they would blow off the fireworks and anybody who was at this end of town would be able to see them at the very end of the fireworks show there'd be a ground display where they'd ignite a flaming american flag the next day kids would come over here to the park and you'd look for the pieces of the star shells that hadn't completely burned up on their way to the ground. And you could collect those and you could make your own little improvised weapons, fireworks with those. Well, the fireworks stopped sometime in the mid to late 1960s. Here's the way this story goes. This house over here got hit by an errant spark. And this was back in the days when the barricade was there and the street ended right there, so everything to the left of there was kind of like an open, weedy field. And the way the story goes is the homeowner was away at the time, and spark hit the roof of the house. The Elmhurst Fire Department goes over there above the garage. They chopped the hole through the roof, put out the fire, and then they left the note for the guy on his front door. Can you imagine coming home from your weekend or your vacation or something and you got this note from the fire chief, uh, sorry about knocking a hole through your roof, but it was necessary. Well, the water tower in Butterfield Park is kind of an iconic landmark. 
It's been around since the late 1950s when it was constructed. But how many of you remember when there used to be a well here? There used to be this little steel, it was almost like an igloo. It had a rounded sort of shape. And I believe that was a chlorination building of some sort. And I talked to one city worker and he had told me that the city had eventually drilled 1,500 feet down into the ground and they were pumping water from like the 1,100 feet, 1,200 feet. Swinging around, you can get another look at the ball field. And then over here is the Park District building. There's daycare in there now. And you'll notice the roof has a peak. When this building was built, it was a flat roof. And it was kind of attractive to local kids who wanted to climb up on that roof and goof around. Now you might notice there's a funny little device up on the roof. That's a lightning detector. Uh, if lightning is detected within 20 miles of this location, a light will flash and an alarm will go off. Now in my day, playing baseball in town, if a kid got hit by lightning and killed, it didn't bother us. We just played around him and waited until the parents come to drag the body away. Well, the tennis court has remained pretty much the same. The playground, however, has changed up significantly. Uh, oh, 15 years ago, uh, Park District came in and they spent $300,000 on this park to improve asphalt trails and to put in new types of playground equipment and to put in a picnic gazebo. The play area used to be, oh, much closer to the west boundary of the uh, park compared to where it is now. There used to be a high swings, a low swings. There was a funny little monkey bars that was shaped like a spaceship, like a space capsule was at an angle. And that was back in the great days of the Apollo moon missions, and so you could pretend to be an astronaut if you were over here. And then this was also the days when it didn't cost very much to impress the kids and give them something to play with. And right in this general area, there used to be a big old cement pipe section. It was probably four foot tall at the most, maybe six foot, seven foot long, and kids just loved to play in that pipe. And then somewhere back over this way, there was like a, a merry-go-round, you know, a spinning little thing. And they don't put many of them in parks anymore. Seems there's a liability question with kids flying off those things at high RPMs and uh, getting severely hurt, killed, maimed, etc. This is a view from Butterfield Park looking south at what a lot of people used to call the old scary house, the haunted house, Frankenstein's lab. This house used to sit all by itself, uh, open fields around it, all the way down the Yorkfield School, all the way down the Cedar. Oh, almost all the way down to York and Butterfield, which just empty fields. And it was kind of a big old gloomy house, and so acquired a uh, reputation. Uh, nothing bad ever happened there, but it was just kind of a spooky looking house. Now up at Butterfield Park, going back in time, the park was acquired by the park district sometime, I think in the very late 1930s, but before that there used to be a farmstead up here and if you look close, you can see the low spot there, and that's all that's left of the foundation of the original house. On this corner, there used to be a traffic signal. The traffic signal was for the kids going to Yorkfield School, and there was a crosswalk, a crossing guard, and a let across the street, and that's when there was a great big open field, and a path, gravel path, led across the field to York Field School. I'm approaching the old York Field School area. I'm on Harrison heading west. And this area has been significantly altered. 
uh, houses torn down, replaced. This open field is where the school was located. It was taken down some years ago. They did save some of the bricks for a uh, reconstruction, rebuilding of who knows what. There's another video I did some time ago about Yorkfield School, so that has some more details. But right over here, there used to be a bridge, and then there was the path up to Colfax, and that was a graveled path. And kids heading uh, to their homes across Butterfield Road would walk through there across an open field. And where these houses here are, this used to be the athletic field. Okay, now we're over by Yorkfield School. This is the back side of it, that's the gymnasium. The so-called mobile classroom. And we came over here to look at the new houses. That's where the path used to go. That was an empty field on the other side of that little copse of trees. I see cats on tracks. I see tracks on there. I can't go. Pickup truck. Pickup truck, that's right. It got to go to white. He's on. It's a telephone guy working there. Inside the school, northeast corner. This is uh, Lexington heading west. I'm going to get another quick glimpse of the school grounds. This tree and bush are all that remains of any of the landscaping from the school. Uh, this red house that's coming up, this was built about where the flagpole and part of the parking lot were occupied. There's a sidewalk along here, and this particular sidewalk got constructed uh, because at least one of the kids got hit by a car while going to or from Yorkfield School. Here's the community center.
there used to be a shed barn style building right here and that was where the fire department was originally located and that building lasted up into the 1980s I believe. The uh, Yorkfield Civic Center is available for rent. This is the North Trailer Court or rather where the North Trailer Court used to be. Trailers were removed out of here several years ago. Coming up is a short clip from where the South Trailer Court was located. That's Old York Road there. Once upon a time, before Roosevelt Road was made big, we used to come across and went out that way. soon those will be gone too. The Ark in Lexington. Quite a few bits of history over here. Across the street was the old Yorkfield Fire Department. You'll notice there's a few more uh, traffic signals down there. That's where the new hospital got built and a lot of homes taken out. I remember when that gas station got built years ago. One of the crossing guards used to be stationed right here at this corner and somewhere in this general location used to be this little green hut. It looked like an old outhouse or something. And that's where the crossing guard could take shelter uh, in bad weather. Across the street, that building there that was the second jewel that I remember. The first jewel was located on the far corner of the parking lot. When I say far, I mean closer to York Road here. Uh, that got torn down sometime in the 60s, and this structure back here got built. And then in the mid-1980s, the replacement jewel got built up there at York and Butterfield. If you can see that McDonald's sign, the McDonald's 
was the location of Reserve Savings. And folks will remember Reserve Savings because it had kind of the crazy gull wing roof, kind of a weird sloped roof. This looks really cool through the viewfinder. Shot all this land over here because this is where they're gonna start tearing down houses and put up that hospital annex. Somewhere back in here. Corner of York and Butterfield. Where to begin? Well, that gas station over there is at least the second building I remember. There was another gas station there, and they had a uh, they had mechanics on duty. There was also a photo mat over there. Anybody remember those little photo mats? There was one located oh towards the western edge of their property. Across the street, well, that's the Standard Station. I mean the Amico. I mean the uh, the BP. Over on this corner over here, in my memory was Alberto's. That was a pizza joint, roast beef joint. It was kind of a cinder block building. Had glass windows. Um, I think it had a counter inside, and maybe a pair of small tiny tables if you wanted to eat there. Um, the debate back in the 60s was who had better pizza, Alberto's, Q's over in the hillside, or County Inn down on Roosevelt in the county line. Just north of York and Butterfield, looking across the street, as long as I can remember, there was a dentist office over there. That's the York Barber Shop. He's been there since, oh, the mid-1950s. This little strip mall here, this is relatively new. Uh, there used to be two or three, maybe even four, buildings similar to the barber shop where you had like, it looked like a house, but you had some sort of retail space in the front. And I can remember there was a bookstore here, used books. Uh, it was called the Book Exchange. That was a sad story there. That's for another time, though. And... There was also the coin shop, and the coin shop, that was uh, bad times there. The uh, woman who managed it, she was robbed, murdered. Um, the way the story goes is there was a cop coming through the Jewel parking lot, this parking lot, late one evening, and he sees a bunch of coins laying on the pavement, and when he went to check out what these coins were about, he saw they were all antique coins, old coins, and he went across the street, and that's when he discovered the, uh, uh, the body. The 
The Jewel Food Store here is actually the third Jewel Food Store that I remember. Uh, the first two were over at York and Lexington. This was all rebuilt in the mid 80s. Uh, this used to be the Elmhurst Plaza. Over here was the National Food Store. I think later on it became a Cush. Uh, Williams Liquors was originally in this section. Um, there were several other stores. There was the diner. There was a catalog store. This section of store is the only piece of the original Elmhurst Plaza that's left. The developer uh, just put a new face on it and left it alone for the most part. This was Howard's Drugs, Simon Drugs on the corner. There was Art's Family Shoes. There was the Ben Franklin store. There was the cleaners. And then going this way, um, catalog store, liquor store, uh, hardware store, and the National, of course. This is new construction from uh, the mid-80s, but looking down this way is where the uh, arts barbershop used to be, the shoe repair, and then in more recent memory there was a 31 flavors right on this corner. Okay, there's a McDonald's there now, but there used to be a hardware store there. Big, long, narrow building that went to the back of the lot almost, and behind there was another building like a double store strip mall and in my memory there was a, a convenience store called the Red Hen Pantry and then at the west end of that was a cleaners. I remember when Burger Butt got built um, it was about one quarter maybe one eighth of the size it is now and the Burger King the way I remember it was like a stand-up counter only they had no indoor seating. Where the bank is down there I remember that being an empty lot for a long time um, and there was a circus there one year. An actual, they actually pitched a tent and had a circus. And a little further down, you can see the rooftops. There's townhomes there now. There used to be a row of houses along there. Now, this is interesting here because our modern school board, they got the name of the school misspelled. They call it Bryan Middle School, but it's really Bryan Junior High. Well, over here is the American Legion and some people might remember the old American Legion building and they used to have a M113 armored personnel carrier parked in front. Uh, the old American Legion that got replaced oh the building burned down so they decided to replace the building. This used to be a lot of empty weeds and everything back over here but as I come around I'll show you something interesting. Who remembers putt-putt miniature golf and putt-putt was located somewhere along here unfortunately I can't remember what side of the creek it was on I want to say it was on this side of the creek but I can't be a hundred percent certain all right Roosevelt Road I'm leaving Roosevelt I'm gonna go northbound in 83 and I'm taking the ramp here and right in front of me is this hill and in the old days this hill was called Mount Trashmore uh, more meat recent memory there was a water slide up there. Then as we come around, you can see the Oak Brook Terrace Tower. And the Oak Brook Terrace Tower, that got built on the location of Dispensa's uh, Kitty Kingdom and Toy Castle. Now where the Hilton and the Drury Lane are located. This used to be a drive-in movie theater and I don't have any memory of that but people just a little older than me can tell me about it. And then the Drury Lane building over there, what's interesting about the Drury Lane building is it wasn't built as the Drury Lane, it was built as the Twin Ice Forum. It was uh, skating. They'd have skating for recreation, skating for hockey. And on this side over here was the old Elm skating rink, roller skates, 
and the bowling alley was back in there. I saw a documentary recently that described this particular location as being a uh, giant swamp. And there was some mention of the roads used to be a little different in here. Uh, if you can ever catch that, uh, it's very interesting and worthwhile to watch. New traffic signals behind me at the frontage road, which is now called Brush Hill Road, and then Harvard. They put Harvard through. And then we're coming up on Lexington, and thanks to the new traffic signals to the south, uh, we really don't have to worry about killer Lexington anymore. This is York Commons Pool. It's now known as the Smalley Pool. Uh, it got rebuilt some years ago. But I remember when the original York Commons Pool was built, I was able to come over here and there were no fences or anything and we were able to go down into the pit and they had the walls and everything up and no water in the pool. Now, before York Commons was a park, there used to be greenhouses here, and I can remember those. Now the fire station here, this is the second fire station in this general location, but right where these driveways and this end of the building are, there used to be an old brown brick bungalow house that was owned by the park district for the longest time. This is the Canadian National Railroad tracks, looking east. This was the Illinois Central tracks. And here at York Road, or York Street, there used to be three railroad stations. The two older ones were located about where the 7-Eleven is. Uh, there was a freight station that lasted the longest over there. Uh, Lizadro Museum used it for a time as like a training center. Uh, they'd have classes and things over there. The passenger station is kind of sketchy in my memory. Um, that was taken down. Now way down here, if you can see that like little building there, just next to that there was an Amtrak platform from about 1970, 71, 72 when the Blackhawk service used to go through town. When you look at the old maps of this area, there were a lot of railroad tracks that came across. There was a siding over there. They came across York Road and they branched out. Uh, the bulk oil plant was back there. I think it was operated by Standard Oil. That was back in the days when you had uh, oil burning furnaces and then the little oil trucks would go around and deliver the oil. The uh, railroad was mostly a pr uh, freight operation but the Illinois Central did have passenger coaches and they were like a uh, oh kinda like a purple and orange combination and Addison was the end of the line. They'd get up there to North and Addison Road there was a line that kicked north all the way to uh, downtown Addison and there was a train shed there where they stored the uh, equipment I remember when this gas station got built, this was a Phillips 66. Looking at the old drugstore, which is now the cleaners. And across the street here, right on the corner was a liquor store and a bar. And you might recall the name of the bar was The Office, which I always thought was the coolest name for a bar. You could call home and say, yeah, dear, I'm going to be late. I'm still at the office. This stretch of Valette over here, this is kind of interesting because this was all houses as long as I could remember. There was like a row of five or six houses through here. Um, the pharmacy back over there, that's relatively new. The, uh, uh, there's townhomes behind there. Further down the street there used to be, I want to say it was another standard station with the car wash. I think that one was called Southtown. York State Bank's been on this corner the old York State Bank and I remember when they expanded and they took down the liquor store and the bar but even before that they expanded the whole back end and they had that big two-story drive-through thing. I'm at York Road and the Prairie Path and looking at the old Great Western Railroad Station. There used to be two sets of tracks that came through here, the Chicago and Great Western oh towards the north of the right-of-way and then the Chicago Roar and Elgin trolley to the south and the Great Western was mostly a freight operation. Through Elmhurst they had a double track. And 
over here used to be a lumber yard a material place this used to be the office I think it was Hammerschmidt ran it and I remember coming in here to buy lumber they'd have a desk tour or a counter towards the back and they'd write you up and then you'd go in the yard and somebody would pull the lumber for you up over here this empty lot on this corner until recently this was a browns fried chicken that building just came down but before it was a browns fried chicken it was a gas station and the only reason I remember it being a gas station is the family would get gas over here and they had some uh, promotions one of the promotion was like toy cars like matchbox cars and I got a couple of those and then for some reason I remember they had uh, thermal blankets you know you fill up a gasket a thermal blanket over on the empty lot there right on the corner that was another gas station and uh, well, in recent memory that was known as TCBY yogurt that structure just came down behind it where the asphalted parking lot is that was the old Dulles cleaners and that came down oh maybe a year or so ago and I don't know who's putting the parcels together Coming back over this way, right about here is where the Great Western tracks crossed York Road. And I have my own story about that train. Um, happened to be caught by the last train. And the way this story goes was sometime in the uh, late 60s, I was with my mother. She was driving me downtown Elmhurst somewhere to an appointment. And we got held up by a train. And the train was here a long time. And I remember my mother, oh, she was fretting about being late for the appointment. You can never be late for an appointment. Well, finally the train moved on across the tracks. So it was moving west. And we made our appointment on time and everything. We got home. And then later in the day, it's either that evening or the next morning, we find out, oh, did you hear? They ripped out the tracks down there. There's going to be no more crossing, no more delays. Right, well, I'm right. going to wrap this video up now. I'm just going to show you one last thing. Do you see that brown building back there? Well, that's been a park district maintenance garage for a while. It's one of the last leftovers of the lumber yards and material buildings that were located in this quadrant. And that's coming down in the very near future. So you hear me talk about hidden history, lost history, stuff that used to be around. If you're at all curious, you might want to come and take a quick look at it. And as far as my videos go, I expect to be doing more, so just stay tuned to the channel. You'll never know what will pop up.